This lesson deals with a Zener diode and a voltage regulator application. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 9, starting on page 11. I'm going to introduce a new kind of a diode called a Zener diode, and I'm going to define the voltages and currents in the opposite direction. So the voltage is now from the cathode to the anode, and the current flows from the cathode to the anode. Now if you were to plot V sub Z versus I sub Z, you would get a diode-like characteristic except that the VD on is a different value now called V sub Z, and it can be selected from a series of parts. The diode also still works in the other direction. In other words, the voltage from anode to cathode, if a current is flowing in this direction, would be VD on. But because we've reversed the polarity of the voltage and the direction of the current, that would now occur in the third quadrant. We normally intend these to be used in this first quadrant. Let me propose a model for this. This is shown below. The current I sub Z is positive, is in this direction. It can only go this way, come out this way. If this diode then is on, then this one should be off. We can just solve for the voltage across here. So if this diode is on, the voltage across the cathode to the anode is V sub Z, so it's shown here. Let's just solve for the voltage across this diode. So the rise in voltage would equal minus VD on minus V sub Z plus zero. And that's a negative number. So yes, this would be off. Let me erase this and go in the other direction. Most current is flowing in this direction. In other words, I sub Z is a negative number. And the current can only go this way, come back out this way. That would mean that this diode is on, so it would be a short. And this diode will be off, and we can just solve for that. Before we do that, the voltage across the anode to cathode would be VD on, and then the voltage from cathode to anode would be minus VD on, so it would be on this part of the curve. Let's solve for this voltage, show that this diode is off. So we'll start here. So the rise in voltage equals the drops of minus VD on, and then minus V sub C. Both negative numbers, and this diode is off. And then if both diodes are off, we have no current flowing, and that would be the section that's right over here. Now what are some typical values for a Zener diode? I've listed some parts here. This is a 3.3 volt Zener, a 6.8, a 9.1, and a 12 volt Zener. Now because there's a curve that's continuous here, it's not two straight lines, but a very soft corner that they really recommend having some minimum current in the Zener diode to get this regulated voltage. And so these Zeners listed on the bottom were specified to have at least 20 milliamps of current flowing in them to assure these Zener voltages. Now these particular parts are actually rated at a half a watt or 500 milliwatts. Let's take a look at an example of what's called a shunt regulator. And this is placing a Zener diode across a load. And this load can vary over a range of values. Take a look at a supplemental problem that takes a look at a CD player. All right, I guess the state of the Zener diode. Now the Zener diode can only absorb power, a piece of silicon, likewise the resistors, and so this voltage source has to put current out of its plus terminal to supply the power absorbed by these elements. Current's gonna flow in this direction and this direction. So I'm gonna guess that diode D2 is on and D1 is off. This is gonna show the equivalent circuit of just the Zener voltage, which was the 1N759, which is the 12 volt Zener on the previous page. What's the output voltage? Well, it's right in parallel with the 12 volts, so it's 12 volts. What's the current in here? Well, by Ohm's law, it's gonna be 12 volts divided by the resistance of 150 ohms, and that's 80 milliamps. So the current in the load is 80 milliamps. Now, how much current is in the Zener? Well, I can't get that directly, but if I knew the current in the resistor, I could solve for it. So let's go around the loop here. The rise in voltage is 15. The drop would be 30 ohms times I of 30 plus 12. So I can solve that equation for the current. It's 15 minus 12 divided by 30, and that's 100 milliamps. So there's 100 milliamps here. So the current in here would have to be 20 milliamps. You can do, you can do Kirchhoff's law formally, but this is real quick. Just look at the picture. So whatever enters the node has to leave the node. So you could solve for I sub Z that way. That's 20 milliamps. So the guess checks. Let's do the same problem again, but with a different load. So now let's change the load to 125 ohms. Current has to come out of the plus terminal, go back this way. So we're going to, again, guess that the diode D2 is on and D1 is off, and we just got the Zener voltage. And again, the voltage across the load is still 12 volts, but now the current is 12 divided by 125, so that's 96 milliamps. Now the voltage across this resistor hasn't changed. It's still what it was before. Let's go around the loop again. 15 volts is equal to this drop plus this drop, and so we still have the same value we had before. And that's 3 volts divided by 30 ohms, or 100 milliamps. So now the current in here is only 4 milliamps. And so the guess checks. So what's happening is the load is varying. 
the current that goes in the load is or part of the 100 milliamps that's coming in and what's ever left over goes in the Zener diode. So the amount of power dissipated in this Zener diode is going to be the product of the voltage times the current, but it would vary and the worst case is when there's no load here and all the current comes into here. Now there's another case to worry about and that is if the load got smaller. In other words, if it wanted all of this 100 milliamps, what would be the value of the resistor? Well, just take 12 volts and divide it by 100 milliamps, that'd be 120 ohms. If this was 120 ohms or smaller, the Zener diode wouldn't turn on. We would be between those two straight lines, which is between the minus VD on and the plus V sub Z. This is how a regulator works. It keeps a constant voltage across the load, and it takes up whatever current's left over, up to a point. And this is some information about a Zener diode and using it as a regulator.